In a large and royal city of China, there was once a poor widow who lived alone with her son Aladdin. He was already more than 15 years old, intelligent and healthy. But instead of helping his mother, he used to play hopscotch all day long in the streets with the other boys of the neighborhood. As for his poor mother, she tired her eyes and her strength by sewing and also by working in the houses of rich people. Yet so fond was she of her son that she never reproached him in the least. One evening, Aladdin came upon a stranger who was very richly dressed. You're Aladdin, aren't you? Yes, I am. So what? I should like to come home with you and share your meal. All right, come if you wish. But there's not much to eat. You'll be as hungry afterwards as you were before. No, that is of no importance, my dear Aladdin. Let us go. On the way, the stranger stopped at a shop. He bought bread, fruit, a roast duck, wine, and all kinds of cakes. When she saw them coming in, their arms loaded with fine food, Aladdin's mother could not believe her eyes. Goodness gracious, what's all this? Our supper, mother. It's a present from this gentleman. You will allow me the honor, madam? But come in, kind sir, come in. The meal over, the stranger introduced himself. Uh, madam, I am the brother of your late husband. But my husband never told me of any brother. I happen to be 20 years older than he was, madam. And when I left China to seek my fortune in Africa, your husband was still a baby. He'd probably forgotten all about me. Yes, I suppose. I am now a rich man. And I have no family, and so I want Aladdin to become my heir. And as for you, my dear sister, you can stop living like a slave and live like a queen. He came back every day, carrying each time sumptuous presents for his stepsister and his nephew. He had a magnificent robe made, specially for Aladdin, saying, I wish that my nephew be dressed as becomes the son of a Mandarin. One morning, he said, Aladdin, I want you to come with me today. I have something very important to do, and I shall need your help. But you must not speak about it to anybody. It's a secret. Aladdin put on his fine clothes and went off with his uncle. They 
walked for a long time, crossing over the town and on some distance into the country. Then they came to a large mountain, and here the uncle stopped by an enormous rock. Here we are, Aladdin. Now, collect some sticks and start a big fire at the foot of this rock. Be as quick as possible, because it's getting late. Of course, uncle. There it is. The uncle then took from his sleeve a little box, and from it he spread into the flames a fine powder. At the same time, pronouncing these magic words. Abracadabra, fee, fi, fo, fum. Zoop! Suddenly, the rock rolled forward, revealing a stone staircase which descended into the ground. Aladdin was terrified. You, you must be a magician, Uncle. Not at all, my boy. Just a little trick I picked up in Africa. We must be quick now. Down you go. What? M m m me? Are you scared? Oh, no, no, Uncle. At the end of these steps here is a large open door. Then you will pass through three marble rooms. In the first room, you will find chests filled with copper coins. In the second, chests filled with silver coins. And in the third, chests filled with gold coins. Be careful not to touch anything, because all this treasure belongs to the genies. You will then go into a great orchard, where all the fruits on the trees are precious stones. Don't waste time in trying to pick any of them, because this is what I want you to do. In a corner of the orchard, lying on the ground, you will see an old copper lamp. And that's what I want. Pick it up and bring it to me, running as fast as you can. Because if you delay, the rock will roll back into place and you will be locked in underground. Now off you go. Aladdin went down the steps as fast as his legs could carry him. He rushed through the three marble rooms without stopping or even looking at the chests filled with copper, silver and gold. But when he came to the orchard, he stopped for a minute, amazed at the beauty of the trees covered with jewels shaped like fruit. There were pears made of emeralds, rubies like cherries, peaches like opals, and plums like amethysts. It was all so brilliant that the light they gave out seemed like music. Then, distantly, Aladdin heard the voice of his uncle. Don't think I've come down here just to get this old bit of junk. I'm going to get as many of these precious fruits as I can take away with me. He filled all his pockets as well as every pleat and fold of his clothes. Then he picked up the old lamp and as quickly as he could, made for the stone staircase. Getting to the foot of the steps, he heard his uncle shouting down angrily. At that moment, the earth trembled, and looking up, 
Aladdin saw the rock rolling back into position. Aladdin was completely flummoxed. He tried to do what his uncle asked, but there just wasn't time. The rock was back in its place. silence and the darkness was terribly frightened. He held the lamp tightly so as not to drop it and rubbed it against his clothes without thinking what he was doing. I am here, O oh master of the lamp. Who, who, who are you? I am the genie of the lamp, your servant, O oh master of the lamp. Whenever you rub the side of the lamp, I will come ready to obey your wishes, because you are my master. C can you get me out of here? If you order me to, yes. Genie of the lamp, get me out of here. Instantly, Aladdin found himself outside the cave and in the open air. He rubbed the lamp again, purposely this time. I am here, master of the lamp. Genie, take me home to my mother. He had scarcely said these words than he found himself back home on his doorstep. His mother ran out to him, crying with joy. Aladdin, my son, where have you been? I thought you were lost. Mother, my uncle is not my uncle. He's a wizard. He made use of us so as to steal from the genies of the mountain this wonderful lamp which I've got here. But now it belongs to me. A dirty old lamp like that. What good is that to anyone? Watch, Mother. Aladdin's mother fainted with amazement, but Aladdin, who was getting quite used to his genie, ordered quite casually, Supper, genie, for two, please. <laughs> 